Hi, and welcome back to another one of our online lectures here in World History. We're going to finish off the Holocaust today with a lesson I call healing. Uh, we're going to look at some of the efforts that came at the end of the Holocaust and, and afterwards that were, in a way, an attempt to help um, heal the wounds of the Holocaust. And I mean that metaphorically because so many people had already been killed. Um, I will tell you that, you know, there's really nothing you can do to make people feel okay with what happened. I mean, you're talking 11 million people killed, 6 million of them are Jews. You're not getting those people back. So any effort and attempts at healing are going to be, you know, fairly, um, they're, they're just not going to live up to what, what you want. But there are some attempts here. We're going to look at some situations that tried to uh, fix some of the issues. We do have one question we're going to seek to answer, and that's going to help us understand. Uh, it says, evaluate the efforts made after the Holocaust to help heal the memories of the Holocaust. And so when we look at what we will learn, kind of give us a roadmap here. We're going to look at the liberation of the concentration camps. Eventually the Nazis um, fled in a lot of these cases, uh, left these prisoners to die, and luckily the Allies were there to liberate them and, and give them food and take care of them. Uh, doesn't mean it's a happy moment all the time, but it, it certainly um, allowed a lot of people who were still alive to maybe find freedom. We'll talk about the role of the German citizens throughout the Holocaust and what they should have done or sh maybe shouldn't have done uh, while all of this was going on. We'll talk about the creation of Israel and how that connects to the Holocaust. And we will talk about the Nuremberg trials um, that attempt to put Nazi war criminals uh, on trial and bring them to justice. And we'll finish with what this means for today and some lessons for today. So that's what we're going to look at here today. So we're going to set the stage here. The Holocaust mostly ended with the German surrender in May of 1945. Uh, shortly before this, this is called VE Day, Victory in Europe Day, uh, May 8th, 1945. It was shortly before this that Hitler committed suicide. So, of course, Hitler is never going to be brought to justice for uh, what he did causing World War II and the Holocaust. Uh, he's going to be dead before this actually finishes up. Six million Jews had been murdered, and now the survivors had to start over. I mean, that's the reality of it. There are, there are thousands and thousands of people that were still in concentration camps and alive when this all ended. And what to do next is not an easy question to answer, uh, but many of them had to figure out, you know, who's still alive in my family? What do I do? Where do I live? Where's my property? Do I get anything back? Um, and certainly that's, that's a very difficult situation to be in. Like I said, Hitler committed suicide before Germany surrendered, leaving countless others to take the blame and punishment for his orders. You know, we've seen Schindler's List at this point. Uh, in my course, uh, we, we show that film, and as I mentioned, at no point in Schindler's List are you going to see Adolf Hitler. Uh, lots of different people believed in this. They, they were anti-Semitic. They wanted to get rid of the Jews just like Hitler did. He might have been the one who uh, helped get the thing started, but certainly many others uh, should have been held responsible for the actions of, of the Nazis. And many of them will never see a, a single day in prison, unfortunately. So, liberation of the camps. The Soviet Union liberated many of the camps as they pushed in from the east. If you know a little bit of your World War II history, the Allied powers really surrounded the German Empire. Uh, the United States and the Allies moved in uh, south from Italy and west when we invaded France during D-Day. But it was the Soviet ar army that moved in from the east. Uh, and so they liberated much of Poland. Uh, so the camps that were there were freed by the Soviet Union, not so much the United States. When these Allied troops found the camps, they had no idea what they were dealing with. In many cases, they hadn't heard of concentration camps. They hadn't seen concentration camps. Uh, they didn't know that these were Jewish people in there. Um, a lot of this had been kept very secret. These, these camps were sort of out of the way. Um, the Germans did that on purpose. 
Um, so when, whether it was the Soviet troops or American troops or, or French troops or British troops, whatever, from the Allied side, this was a big mystery to them. And a lot, oftentimes a lot of confusion came with it, wondering what am I looking at? What is wrong? You know, and you come across these camps seeing all these emaciated people who are thin and gaunt and, and certainly starving. Uh, it certainly raised a lot of questions for these troops that came across these camps. Uh, many remaining Nazi commandants or camp leaders fled. Some of them got away, others didn't, as you're going to find out later in this story. There is a really, really good clip from the series Band of Brothers. If you don't know what Band of Brothers is, it's a phenomenal 10-part series on, world, on the European theater of World War II. Um, so there's a clip where you can see the American soldiers coming across one of these camps and really just not having a clue as to what it is. Uh, so you can check that out on YouTube. The link is here. Otherwise, I'm going to post the link here below. Uh, just go ahead and click on that. And I believe it's about an eight or nine minute clip uh, that will show you the liberation scene from Band of Brothers. Now, what was the role of the German citizens throughout all this? I mean, were they aware of the full situation? Well, the truth is some of them did know. Others did not. Some of them didn't want to ask questions. Uh, some of them didn't want to be associated with what was going on. But when you see this many Jews being deported, um, Jews that lived in your town being arrested or put on trains or even killed, uh, it would be very difficult for me to believe that some people weren't aware of what was actually going on. So, you know, again, it's really some knew and others did not. Um, it was very difficult and dangerous to question Hitler and the Nazis. I mean, e even if you were against it, even if you weren't anti-Semitic, what could you do about it? Uh, so it becomes very, very difficult for the German citizen, those who aren't in the army and th those who really don't affiliate themselves with Nazism, uh, it would have been very difficult for them to stand up and do something about this because anti-Semitism was very strong and many turned a blind eye. There were a lot of people who wanted this to happen or were okay with it happening. And so it's, it's stories like Oscar Schindler's. Having seen Schindler's List now, uh, we know what a, a great sacrifice he made um, to save a lot of lives. I mean, he wanted to make a lot of money with his factory, but then he used his factory to harbor Jews and to keep them safe, um, to put them on a list to ensure that they didn't go to Auschwitz or one of the other death camps. So some like Oscar Schindler risked their lives to help Jews find refuge. Uh, there were other stories like Schindler. There were other um, factory owners that did the same thing, but uh, the stories are very, very few, unfortunately. All right, we're going to end there. That's going to be the end of part one. When we come back, we're going to continue. We're going to talk about the Nuremberg trials. We're going to talk about what happened to some of the specific architects of the Holocaust. Uh, and sadly, I'll tell you this, sort of as a precursor, um, it's not a real satisfying ending. You want to believe that everybody involved here saw their day in court and were uh, put on trial and ultimately you know, either put away in prison for the rest of their lives or executed. But uh, in most cases, that is not what happened. So we'll talk a little bit about that in part two. So go ahead and hit stop and queue up part two.